about Supertramp. No, 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 not the English rock band that was big during the 70s and 80s. I want to talk about a true BFF. Supertramp, the Canadian professional wrestler who was big during the 70s and 80s. Debuting in Edmonton in 1975, Supertramp spent a total of 11 years wrestling throughout Canada and the Pacific Northwest for the NWA, wrestling the likes of the Mongolian Stomper, the Kelly Twins, Billy Shields and Kurt Von Hess. He has cemented his status as a true wrestling legend. Now, if you've never heard of this wrestling legend, Super Tramp, well, there's a very good reason why that's the case. Super Tramp doesn't exist. Well, that's not entirely true. The character of Super Tramp exists. The man behind the mask exists. But the man's so-called career, it's a, an entire fabrication. It never happened. Yet for years, this BFF, this man who goes by the name of Supertramp, has been able to successfully dupe and trick hundreds, if not thousands, of unwitting people into thinking that he is a true old-school wrestling veteran. But in reality, all this man is, is a BFF. A big f***ing fraud. It only takes a couple of moments of critical thinking to realize and learn that Supertramp is a BFF. Let's start, for example, looking at his promo pictures. Nothing too unusual, right? A pair of pictures in which he's wearing different gimmicks. It's not that far-fetched. After all, people have worked multiple gimmicks in the past. But here's the thing. Those two pictures are the only ones ever taken of Supertramp during that time period. There is not one picture that exists on this planet of Supertramp actually wrestling a match. Nothing of a headlock, a wrist lock, head scissors, picking his nose in the middle of the ring just standing there. Nothing. Nothing like that exists. Those two promo pics are it. This is an important point because I can say with full confidence that everyone who has ever wrestled in the history of humanity has either been photographed or videotaped wrestling in a match at least once. From the biggest names of all time, to the lowly territory jobbers, to the crappy wrestlers like I was, to the backyard idiots, if they've wrestled in a match, chances are someone, somewhere, has a picture or video of it. And now that we live in the internet age, no matter how obscure a wrestler might be, there is something on YouTube or something in Google Images that has preserved their moment in the ring for all to see forever and ever. So if you claim to have wrestled for 11 years across Canada and the Pacific Northwest and no one can find a picture or a video of you wrestling, guess what? You're a BFF. Now, Super Tramp, whose name coincidentally makes him ungoogleable, has a perfectly reasonable explanation as to why there are no pictures or videos out there of him wrestling. He says that they were all destroyed by a vengeful ex wife, and those promo pictures are all he has left. So, there you have it. Super Tramp was the sole owner of every piece of wrestling footage and photography ever taken of him. Not the promoters, not the TV stations, not the fans, not the wrestling rags, no one else. One man, and they were all destroyed by one person. How convenient. And even if you were willing to suspend your disbelief and say to yourself, yeah, it is possible that he was the sole owner of all that footage and got destroyed by someone else, it doesn't change the fact that Super Tramp has never, ever wrestled. Vance Nevada is a seasoned wrestling veteran and a longtime wrestling historian, and he has spent many years compiling results from every wrestling card that has pretty much ever taken place across the country of Canada over the last several decades. Super Tramp claims that his very first match was against a man called the Lumberjack in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada in January 1975. Not only does Vance Nevada's research disprove that claim, but it also shows that no one by the name of Super Tramp has ever wrestled in Canada at all, ever, throughout the 70s or 80s. I suppose it's possible that maybe Super Tramp trained to be a wrestler during the 1970s, but I think it's pretty obvious it's as far as he ever got. To my knowledge, all this guy ever did was write for some wrestling publications and carry the boys' bags. That does not make you a wrestler! Several different people have made fan art of this guy. He has wrestled more on paper than he has in real life. He's been inducted into two Hall of Fames, one from a crappy wrestling federation in Washington and the other from some, some crappy Canadian fan club. Two! Two Hall of Fames! He has a Facebook page with more likes than mine! How does that make any sense? I'm real! And furthermore, I actually wrestled! 
Over the years in Oregon and Washington, some small-time feds had bought into his bullcrap and welcomed it with open arms. But the minute someone put two and two together and confronted Supertramp about it, that guy split. Not only that, but when people confront him about it on Facebook, they get blocked by Supertramp. This man is a liar, and he doesn't have the guts to even admit it. This guy is nothing more than a mark. Someone who was able to get some pictures of himself with the boys backstage at some shows several years ago. Now he believes he was a wrestler, which is completely disgraceful. But you know what the sad thing is? He's not the only one out there. I'm sure every territory in the country has at least one like him. Someone who, you know, wrestled very sparingly in their youth and they like to uh, inflate their status to the young, more impressionable wrestlers and fans. Or worse, in the case of Supertramp, someone who never wrestled and yet claims that he's this old school wrestler. There are BFFs all over this country and Supertramp is just one of the many. These guys don't think they're hurting anyone by lying to people to their face and blatantly inflating their status to fans, but what these people are really doing is trivializing the real sacrifices that real wrestlers make every single day. They're the pus-filled warts on the anus of a business that is already suffering from an image problem, and these BFFs are not helping matters. And I know it might not mean much coming from me. I mean, after all, who the hell am I? I mean, I don't claim to be anyone special. I don't claim to be a big shot or anything, but at least I can hold my head up high and say, actually worked in the business. So how can you pick out these BFFs? It's simple. First, make sure that their body of work can be found online, either in pictures or in video on YouTube. If it's bad, or worse, if it doesn't exist, that's your first sign. Second, be wary of anyone who refers to any and all famous wrestler as their good friend. Either they're delusional super fans, or they are literally marijuana. And finally, if they're passing out autographed pictures of themselves or introducing themselves as wrestling legends, you can tell that BFF to F right off. Tell your friends on Facebook, write to Snopes, write to your congressman. You can do your part to rid the wrestling world of these god-awful BFFs and you can restore some dignity to an industry that desperately needs it. Be sure to like this video, comment below, share the video, subscribe to Wrestling With Regret, and buy the t-shirt. I'm Brian Zane, and together we can rid the world of the scourge of the BFF. God bless America.